Anyway, we should, probably, Michael Danby. we should bring in Michael Danby. Thank you for joining us for, uh, on To The Point. Let me ask you straight off the bat, Mr Danby, will you oh. rule out challenging Bill Shorten, or are you, as Kevin Andrews is, are you prepared to challenge for the leadership if the timing is right? Uh, unlike Kevin Andrews, I will uh, not be challenging the leader in my local paper, in a national newspaper, in anywhere, and even on Sky News. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you need to be more ambitious, Michael Danby. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I, I think we're, uh, um, I think you're very perceptive about Graham Richardson and Paul Kelly's comments about this. I think Malcolm was planning this um, scam, this con, uh, a few days beforehand. That's why he, he, he came up with his tax plan at the, at the Panthers field with no briefing papers beforehand. And uh, he's now blaming the states. But I, I think people see through it. It's pretty pretty shallow. Um, I think we've got a good chance. Um, I think all of our team, the, the really good thing is Bill Shorten will have been the leader of the Labor Party for an entire period of, uh, uh, of opposition. It's the first time for many years that um, we've managed that, uh, that record and uh, we're all pretty united behind him. He wouldn't want to risk a second term in opposition though, would he? As you point out, Michael Danby, that's very rare for that to happen. Were he not to win, you wouldn't think he'd survive another three. Mm. Uh, uh, I think you're trying to, to trap me with that one, Peter. I wouldn't necessarily concede that. I think yeah. um, Bill will do very well, if not, if not win. Um, and he's a great credit for having, as you said, uh, been more substantive on policies than anyone gave us credit for and for holding the team together in a period when we, uh, in previous times, would have been very disunited. i got to say, Michael Danby, I, I don't disagree with that, but you've also got to give the uh, new method of choosing a leader in the Labor Party some credit for the stability that we've enjoyed, uh, we, we being the, uh, the Labor Party in the past. Uh, that means giving Kevin Rudd credit. It was well, it does. Idea. It does mean giving Kevin Rudd credit for that. Uh, ex post facto, I think that's uh, uh, that's true. I'm not I'm not sure that um, Kevin intended uh, Bill to have such a uh, <laughs> stable three rain. years, but um, uh, <laughs> unintended consequences. You've always got to look at the laws of unintended consequences. Indeed, indeed. Um, Michael Danby, can we turn uh, to the return of Parliament, 18th of April? Uh, I'm sure you probably had other things you thought you'd be doing uh, throughout the month of April. Uh, but uh, what do you make of the Greens coming back into a Parliament where they basically gave away uh, Senate voting reform quite easily to the government and then turned around and found out that there may well be a double dissolution off the back of that Senate voting reform? Well, um, uh, I'm not sure they're that disappointed about it. Um, in my view, it's the only way Senator Rhiannon and um, <laughs> Senator Hanson Young will get back if there is a, a lower quota. Um, but uh, I think the Greens are being very naive with the Liberals. The question for me is, is, is Senator Di Natale the black wiggle or is he Meg Lees? Um, I think some of the policy concessions that the Green Party is making to the Liberals um, are starting to cause their, vo their voters to wonder about them and um, um, they better hope that the next election is not a Meg Lees moment for them. You'll remember what I'm talking about. Yes. Um, uh, uh, Peter and Christina, when, when um, uh, the de former Democrats party supported uh, the goods and services tax and then went into terminal demise. But I just want to challenge you on this notion that the Greens and the Liberals may well do a preference swap. I mean, on the one hand, you might say even the Peter Dutton's claim they've gotten children out of detention, which, you know, is, you know, by sleight of hand, change of definition uh, victory. But nonetheless, his claim could be a play to the Greens. But on the other hand, the Greens are out there saying they're going to get rid of the capital gains discount entirely. Uh, that's surely not going to play with the Liberal base. I mean, are you really countenancing some, er some kind of world where the Greens and the Liberals could come to some type of preference swap? Uh, if you're saying um, economic responsibility, economic rationality, forget um, uh, responsibility and national security are reasons why Liberals shouldn't support uh, a far-left party like the Greens, I agree with you. But the, but the problem is, is that there are some people who are favouring short-term opportunism, and I pay great credit to Sky News for um, drawing this out of, out of Michael Kroger over the last uh, couple of months. Uh, he is planning that here in Victoria, and I think part of the unseen arrangement with uh, the, the 
uh, Greens' enthusiasm for that uh, um, uh, Senate reform where they wipe out all of the other small parties including some left of centre uh, protest parties like the sex party um, th that uh, there is this quid pro quo here at least in Victoria and maybe in New South Wales where uh, they issue split tickets the Greens um, the Green Party um, and uh, that lowers the second preferences that go to Anthony Albanese, Tanya Plibersek uh, uh, David Feeney and a uh, new candidate in Wills, Peter Khalil. And that may be sufficient uh, for uh, a Green Party uh, people to be elected. The Liberals will run third in those, uh, those electorates in my view and uh, uh, that means uh, the Kroger-Turnbull scenario of putting a far left party in Parliament rather than a centre left party is uh, a real scenario that serious people like you two um, and uh, others ought to be looking at. It's a, a policy well, that is not in the national interests of Australia or Australia's future. Well, uh, Michael Danby, if deals are done for preference exchanges between the Greens and the Liberal Party, is it your contention that the Liberal Party have stooped as low as Labor has gone in recent elections? Because that's what Labor always does. Uh, Labor's preferences are never distributed, uh, Peter, and I would argue that in circumstances where responsible people like the Labor Party are in a position of putting in um, uh, the Green political party or the Liberals. Um, I, uh, but in the, I don't in the think Senate, should, I don't in think the it Senate done. Labor has always preferenced the Greens ahead of the Liberal Party. I mean, not in lower house contests, but that's only been by virtue of where the contest in the seat actually is. It's the same thing, isn't it? I mean, the rise of the Greens in the federal parliament has been on the back of Labor preferences. Sam Dastyari and Paul Howes were very critical of this when I spoke to them a few years ago. Well, I, I agree with their criticism. Um, I think we have to, to rethink uh, uh, that strategy. And I, as in the last election, um, have, uh, am determined that in my seat um, uh, that um, I will be preferencing uh, the Liberals ahead of uh, the Green Party. I, I don't think Senator Rhiannon uh, national security policies. I don't think uh, Senator Di Natale's irresponsible uh, economic policies, as um, Christina pointed out on the capital gains tax, are things that uh, my electorate uh, supports. Um, and um, I want to show some leadership by saying that Michael Kroger's uh, unprincipled opportunistic stance, no withstanding, you won't get the same from Danby. So I'm not competing with Kevin Andrews, I'm competing with uh, Michael Kroger. <laughs> well, Michael Danby, we're going to leave it there, but thank you for coming on to The Point this Thanks afternoon. for your company. Pleasure. Thanks.